Okay, so 2012 GMC Cadia. We got all these codes, okay? Um, we got cam, cam sensor, bank two, is exhaust side. We got cam sensor, bank two, intake. And we got exhaust camshaft, bank one. So what we're gonna focus on is mostly on the crank sensor. So I'm gonna replace that. And I'm gonna try to get all these sensors in, but they all can't just go bad at the same time. But we're gonna do one, two, three, three sensors here, okay? But anyways, main one I wanna do it with you is on this guy right here. So anyways, let me order some parts. The car did stall on them. So we're underneath the car. Our crank sensor is located right below this. So this is a two wheel drive. So there's no shaft going in the back. So you can see the back wheels over there. So this is the front passenger side wheel. And this is the driver side wheel. So exactly, and that's the front bumper. So I'm right underneath here. So you got a 15 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. You need to remove both of those cover to get that cover off. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take this big old wrench and we're gonna just turn this baby loose. And then we should be able to, but if you got a four wheel drive, you're gonna have a big pumpkin over here. So you're gonna have to reach from up here somewhere. And, uh, but it'd be the same setup, okay? But like I said, this is a two wheel drive, front wheel drive. So if you got all wheel drive, different story. It's gonna be more time consuming, but the job part number two is probably gonna be the same. You're probably gonna need some extensions. Okay, so this guy is coming out. This is a 2012 GMC Cadia. And you got a bank one knock sensor right down here. So if you need to get to that, it's all up to you. And you just hold this light and everything in better position. So what I want to do here is I'm going to switch up the sockets here. So all I'm using is a 15 millimeter and a 10 millimeter deep sockets. You could use shorts if you like, it's all up to you. And then there's a bolt up here. Once that baby is loose, the plate is going to start to move around. And we should have access to the sensor after that. Okay, a few more turns. And it would be a good idea if you use the socket to get this guy off. There you go. And there's our sensor here. So the sensor has that little tab there. So we need to use a pick to pull that forward and then you can squeeze this and get that off. So we're gonna remove the sensor first. So here's my little pick. What I wanna do is I am gonna pull this red tab forward just like that. And now we can use our hand or a pick to push this connector in. Sometimes these connectors can be brittle. So be careful. Uh, uh, okay, I'm sorry, the connector's back here, so there's no space back there. So what you want to do is use your pick to squeeze that little guy. So I had somebody come in. So I'm doing this with one hand. It is a little difficult for me because, okay, there you go. My connector's out. Perfect. And guess what? Our uh, crank sensor already came in, so I'm going to show you guys the part number and everything. So what I'm doing is taking a 10 millimeter now. Uh, same tool. So all we use is a 15 millimeter, 10 millimeter to get all this off. And uh, there's our crank sensor on this baby. And that's your knock sensor, bank one. Bank two is on the opposite side. Complicated on the bank two. So this guy, the new sensor is gonna come with the new bolt. So we're gonna re, we're not gonna reuse this bolt. We're gonna use a new bolt. So after that, what you wanna do is, you don't wanna twist and turn this, just try to wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it. And if you need to, use your pick from back here. And if you get a flathead screwdriver, that will work better too. But whatever works your way, it should get the sensor out. Usually the, the, the gasket on these will get brittle and hopefully our sensor doesn't break. They can break internally. I've seen crank sensors or cam sensors break inside there. So use the pick to pull this guy off and this guy should just come right out just like that. There you go. This crank sensor is old and the car stalled on the customer, but we're gonna get our new crank sensor in. Let me get out of here. So exactly, this is where I'm at, right underneath the engine. 
And right here is the bumper. So here's our sensor. This is what it look like. Part number on this baby. This is the original AC Delco. There's the part number. And uh, it is a 213 um, That's the AC Delco number. GM number is 12615626. Show you guys the numbers right there again. So here's the sensor I got under the package. So what I like to do to the sensor is I like to use a synthetic oil. It doesn't matter any motor oil. Just take a tab of it and put it all around the seal. And all you want to do is lubricate that seal. And now we're going to go underneath just like that. It's going to be a live video. We're going to go down there and it should be no issues. And only thing you want to do is you want to take the old sensor and dissolve. Just match it up. It should be the same length. Okay, can't go any further than that. If it's longer, no good. It's probably going to hit inside. It might be a wrong sensor. So uh, if, if you want to clean the board, that's fine too. But here's our new crank sensor. This baby, you should feel a click in there as it goes in, okay? You should have to, you should be able to push this guy. Don't use, don't depend on this bolt. This bolt will help you. But try to manage to get the sensor in there flush. And once it's in there flush, then you could tighten it up and everything should just go in there like i said again don't you see how it snapped right in don't depend on the bolt to make that sensor flush for you and what you want to do now is you want to snug this bolt okay very lightly you don't want to snap this bolt just snug it and that's it bada bing bada boom you're going to take your connector make sure your connector is on there pretty good and it clicks and you push this red tab back in and what i want to do now is I am gonna take this cover and I am gonna take the 10 millimeter bolt with it. And if the, okay, it might be easier for me to take this big fat bolt and get this cover aligned. So it's very important you put this cover back on because if you don't, okay, am I at the correct spot? Yep. It's a weird letter cover. I don't know why they needed such a big cover for this guy to protect this little guy. It is a very critical and important sensor on this vehicle. Without this, your car will shut off, so do not play around. Do not assume that you don't need to put this sensor in. If you got a code for it, replace it. We're going to take the other 10 millimeter and we're going to get this baby in there. So if you got a four wheel drive again, it's gonna be a little complicated. You just use your extension and swivel from a pay. Brr, brr, take these off and you're gonna have to fish everything. You're gonna have to work a little bit hard, but this is what it is. So all I'm gonna do here is, first, I'm gonna lock up this bolt. Just hand tight, okay, nothing crazy. And now I'm gonna switch my socket. And I am gonna rock this baby in. Bada bing, bada boom, our sensor is done. After that, I mean, I'm gonna be changing cam sensor, so that would be a separate video for everything. But at the end, you have to put a scan tool on and reset the light, and that's all you need to do. So pretty much what we use was a 15 millimeter, and we use the 10 millimeter deep socket, 3 8 drive ratchet, and a pick. That's about it. And we got the crank sensor in and out. Thank you for watching.